This is actually happening. Chinese digital night vision has gotten good enough to where I now prefer this over my PVS-14. Let's talk about it. All right, so what the heck is this? This is a Shinex G1A. It has both night vision and thermal. This is a little monocular that they sent over that I thought was gonna be total garbage because my previous experience with digital is the psionic stuff. Hop has a great video about this. I suggest you go watch it, but the TLDR is this sucks. Uh, unless you're like setting it on a tripod and recording night vision shooting footage for YouTube, this is not a viable device to mount to a helmet or anything. So this is where I'm coming from, and this is the bias that I have against this product just from the get-go. So I just got back from the TNVC Night Vision 101 class. This is a two-day course that covers movement, rifle shooting, pistol shooting, PID, basically how to function with night vision on your face. And I ran the entire thing with the G1A. Most people were running PVS-14s or dual tubes. I was the only one running digital and I was the only one that had thermal. I'm not sure what order I'm gonna put all this in, so I'm just gonna start going through specs and it'll make sense in the edit. In terms of specs, we have a 1600 by 1200 low light sensor and then a 384 by 288 thermal sensor. The IR sensor resolution is plenty sufficient for this size display. This resolution is able to clearly see things at the 1x magnification. I would like to see the sensor resolution for the thermal bumped up a little bit. I feel like a 640 would be appropriate for this type of device. A 640 really allows you to not only see that something is there, but allows you to identify it. That said, the night vision high resolution pretty much makes up for the lower resolution thermal, especially when you overlay the two like this device can. Particularly in an outline mode, the low resolution thermal is fine when you're just outlining something on a high resolution night vision display. It is very clear that this squiggly red line around somebody is their thermal heat signature. And when you go to something like a dedicated thermal, that resolution really matters more than when it's overlaid over a high resolution display. And this felt like a high resolution thermal when you were able to combine the night vision and the IR together. The screen on this thing is absolutely massive. This is a two inch display on the back side of this. And for some context, here's the PVS-14. You can see that this is much bigger. What that means is, you can kind of cheat it close to your eye and you get a better field of view. The PVS-14 has a 40 degree field of view. The G1A has a 60 degree field of view. 20 degrees doesn't sound like a whole lot, but going from a 40 degree field of view to a 60 degree field of view is a big difference and you were immediately able to tell and I felt much more situationally aware with the larger field of view in the G1A versus the PVS-14. There's an exercise in the class where you enter a room and somebody was hiding on top of a wall. Now, if you don't do your scans right, you're looking through a 40 degree field of view, it's very easy to miss. As I entered the room, I was immediately able to see them because my field of view was larger in the vertical direction. Because that field of view is not just horizontal, but it's also vertical, my peripheral can actually see the ground in front of me. So if I'm sprinting to some point over there, I can move quickly without having to look at my feet so I don't trip over a log or something. I can just kind of look there and with my peripheral see what type of terrain I'm gonna be moving over. So in terms of focus, you have the front adjust for both the night vision and the thermal. You've got the rear diopter. This is pretty standard. You still have the out in out focus procedure that's the same on a PVS. What is very nice is the depth of field. What remains in focus for this is an immensely greater distance than for a PVS-14. On a PVS, if you're walking into a building, you might have to readjust your focus to go from like outside focus distance to inside a room focus distance. This, not really. The actual depth that you have that is in focus is quite large. So I was able to go from an outside focus, being able to see branches on trees 100 meters away, to inside of a room, and I could read a poster on the wall. That level of focus 
is not something you get on a PVS-14. The refresh rate for this display is 50 FPS. Really, as we learned from the virtual reality video game world, is you kind of want 70 to 90 FPS to really get that immersive feeling where you don't get any smearing or tearing. So how does a 50 FPS display translate to the real world? Well, when moving, I had no issues. That includes running at full speed, going over uneven terrain, it was not a hindrance to my movement. It was not a hindrance to performing administrative tasks close. It was not a hindrance when shooting a rifle, both passively through the red dot or with a laser. I did run into an issue with my pistol shooting. When I would passively aim through the dot with the G1A, all my shots were left. I was aiming on target with the red dot, it was just a split second behind and my gun was actually pointing there. So when I pulled the trigger, I thought I was getting great A zone hits, where in reality the refresh rate got me a little bit and I was just left on all my shots. Now that could be a skill issue on my part, but that is something that I repeatedly saw throughout the class. Now this does not apply if you have a laser on your pistol. Both rifle and pistol laser, very easy to make hits under the G1A. Now in terms of batteries, this has two 18650 rechargeables on the side here. I would probably say this is too much battery for weight reasons. Having this much battery on the side does add a non-trivial amount of weight. I haven't had the chance to run this dry from a full charge. The manual says seven hours. That probably means like five hours of actual use, which is still plenty for a lot of use cases. But especially helmet mounted, I'm running a battery pack. I'm always going to want this, even just as a counterweight on my helmet. After two eight-hour days of pretty much continual use, this is at 100%, and my battery pack is at three out of four lights. So you could get a couple of days of continuous usage out of this setup with a battery pack, which is excellent. In terms of durability, this is IPX5 rated, which basically means you can run it under a kitchen sink to wash it off. It just happened to be raining both nights I was using this, and I was able to run this without any water issues whatsoever. And that rating does not include any dust or debris protection, so this probably wouldn't survive a mud test. This knob here on the left allows you to change zoom. That you can go from 1x to 2x to 4x. When you're shooting a rifle, either with a laser or through the monocular, in a stationary position, having this and just being able to go, boop, I'm on 4x, gives you a significant advantage for making accurate shots. Under 4x magnification at 100 yards, the G1A allowed me to discriminate between center mass and actual center mass. This is a capability that is really only viable if you're stationary. If you bump this to 2x or 4x and try to move, you're gonna have a real bad time. And I'm not a huge fan of this knob. This is a very loosey-goosey knob. It's not like tactile click adjustments. So you can just bump this thing as you're moving around or doing whatever, and then boop, I'm on 4x. Oh fuck, what happened? And then you have to readjust it back to one so you can actually function. PID or positive identification is critically important. This is you being able to see, is that a military aged male? Is that a phone in his hand? Is that a knife in his hand? Oh shit, that's a gun. Being able to make those decisions at distance is critically important. The TNVC class had an excellent exercise where somebody at 100 yards started walking towards the class with something in their hand. And you had to make a decision at what distance you could positively identify what's in their hand and make a life or death decision. Now at 100 yards, most people with night vision could see him. At about 50 yards, everybody started to realize there was something in his hand. At about 10 yards, those with night vision were able to identify that's a PMAG in his hand, not a knife, not a gun. It took all the way to about 10, 15 yards before everybody was able to PID what was in his hand. Hey, that's a PMAG, that's not a knife, that's not a gun. And 15 yards is a lot different than some of the other numbers that people throw around for PID. At 170 yards under night vision, you can probably tell if a military-aged male has an RPG. In the police or civilian world, that's really about 15 yards to see what's in somebody's hand. I had thought that the best mode for PID would be night vision with the outlined thermal overlay. This turned out not to be the case. As the individual came closer, the overlay overlaid. So when his hand was sticking out, I could tell that something was in his hand, but this big red outline and squiggle was causing problems and I couldn't see past that 
to see what the actual object was. I had to go into my settings and disable that overlay, and then I was able to see, oh, that's a magazine, and identify what the object was. So thermal can be a benefit or a con, depending on what sort of PID you're doing. If you just need to know, hey, that's a coyote, hey, that's a person, thermal is great. If you need to be able to distinguish at 10 yards, is that a cell phone or is that a gun? That type of thermal overlay can become a hindrance. Now, in terms of administrative tasks, I do think the G1A beats out the PVS again because of that focus. Being able to look down, read a map, look up, and not have to mess around with your focus is a huge advantage. With the PVS-14, you're cranking on that thing, all right, I can read, and then you're cranking on that thing, all right, I can see over there. With this, it's as simple as look down, read, look up, see. It's hard to overstate how beneficial it is to have both night vision and thermal combined into one device. Now, yes, you can take your PVS-14, slap an E-Cody on it, and you get a similar thermal outline effect as one of the modes on the G1A. The downside to that is an E-Cody is like seven grand and the Chinese ones like three. And e codys just kinda suck in general. It's a pain in the ass to get the brightness right, and getting your whole system to be able to work together flawlessly is a non-trivial ask. And if you do add an e cody to this, you bump up the weight 0.1 kilograms, so now a PVS-14 with an e cody weighs the exact same as the G1A. The prices on PVS-14s are also going up considerably. Entry level tubes are like two grand now, and the cheapest I see on TNVC's website is three and a half. The price of the G1A is around four grand, and if you wanted to go the e cody plus PVS-14, even the Chinese e cody you're looking around five or six grand to get both night vision and thermal capability. All right, let's get into some drawbacks. This is kind of inherent to pretty much all these Chinese companies. They don't really understand how night vision is used in a tactical environment. The tech can be super cool, and yet there are still fundamental disconnects on how the device is actually used. For example, this Fast Mini I did a video on. This is a super small, nice little offset thermal, but for some ungodly reason, they made the back a touchscreen. So it was raining the entire time I was taking the class. This was completely unusable. It was just added weight on my rifle because it totally killed the optic. For this device, there's some weird stuff like the mount that lets you use this as a dedicated optic or as a clip-on, but it's rather large and heavy. It, it seems way overbuilt. And the helmet mount is both underbuilt and overbuilt at the same time. It's overbuilt in the sense that it's this big chunky piece of aluminum, and it's underbuilt in the sense that there's a single tiny screw holding the monocular to your helmet. This knob is just way too loosey-goosey. This really needs to be click, 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 click in order to have tactile feedback so you don't bump it Put yourself in 4x and just get totally screwed as you're trying to move into a new position. All that said, this still gives me more capability than a PVS-14 for about the same weight, and if you added an E-Cody to a PVS-14, exactly the same weight. Night vision is expensive, this is expensive, but the amount of capability you get is non-trivial. In terms of wish list for a Gen 2, I'd bump up that sensor resolution to a 640, fix this knob tactile feedback, get better mounts for both Picatinny and helmet clip-on, and I would like the ability to have onboard recording. But overall, this has completely exceeded my expectations, and if I had to grab a night vision monocular right now, I'd grab this over a PVS-14, which is wild. So those are my thoughts on the G1A. Digital night vision's getting crazy. Give it a couple years, and I think the switch from analog to digital is going to happen. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching.